almost no other app has influenced the way I work as much as Rome Research. It's been called a game changer by fans and for me it really was. But just as quickly as I got excited about this app, I realized that I needed to get away from it sooner or later. And recently it has happened. You can still see me using it in my Skillshare class on scripting edutainment videos, it's free and linked below, but since then I have left Rome. However, I still have fond memories of this piece of software, precisely because of its role for my work. Here is what Rome Research is, who it's for, why I left it and where I switched to. Just so you know, this is an overview, not a deep dive, and this is my farewell to Rome. Rome Research is a note-taking and note management software. Through features like uh, bidirectional linking and block-based working, it tries to mimic the way the human brain thinks. Rome calls itself a note-taking tool for networked thought. Rome research is useful for researching, as the name already states, and for writing on various topics. Seemingly unrelated topics are not a problem in this case, but a feature. They bring out the strength of software like Rome research, or alternatives like Obsidian. The point is to discover connections and intersections between such topics. The term roam refers to roaming, wandering through one's thoughts. The logo of Rome Research seems to show an astrolabe, an astronomical measuring instrument. Poetically speaking, a roam is an app for explorers of the cosmos in their own heads. I guess. I'm not sure about the astrolabe thing though, it's um, open for interpretation. I've read it somewhere, maybe on Reddit. Look it up, I don't know. Okay, moving on. A key reason to use Rome Research is to have a central place for all your notes and to link them together in a meaningful way. The advantage then is that your notes are never forgotten or lost, but they come back into mind when they become relevant to a certain topic. Rome can be used uh, for capturing fleeting thoughts and taking notes on what you read and watch and whatever, but there is so much more you can do with this tool. Rome can be also used for journaling, academic and creative writing, task and time management, and of course a slipbox or Zettelkasten a la Niklas Luhmann, or Zettelkasten as it is pronounced in German. My decision to use Rome research was as with so, with, with so many of us, with so many of us, um, heavily influenced by Sönke Ahrens and his book How to Take Smart Notes. In this book, Ahrens writes about Luhmann's slipbox and how the idea behind it can be utilized or should be utilized for knowledge workers in the digital age. For those wondering what a note-taking tool like Rome Research might be even good for, read this book. I've recommended it here before and I will do so again. The book is aimed at students, but it's also immensely helpful for anyone who does anything with research, note-taking, thinking and writing. Not only academics, but also content creators or even novelists. In June of 2020, the author Sönke Ahrens announced via Twitter that he was switching to Rome Research. Previously, his tool of choice was Zettelkasten 3 by Daniel Lüdecke. When I read this tweet, it gave me the final push to try Rome. After Ali Abdal, Thomas Frank and others had already sparked my curiosity quite a bit. At the time, it seemed like all roads led to Rome. Which wasn't built in a day, by the way. I'm done with the puns. My favorite resources for installation and getting started with Rome Research are linked below the video. Now let's talk about money. What does it cost? Using Rome Research for free is only possible to a limited extent. There is a trial period of 30 days and after that there are different pricing models. And there are even opportunities to apply for a scholarship. But for current information on that, better visit the website which is also linked below. I myself have been paying $15 per month for Rome compared to what I pay and get in return for the Adobe Creative Suite, for example, I think it's a pretty high price. But that was not the only reason why I left Rome. In October of 21, the video Is This the Fall of Rome Research by Jesse J. Anderson brought some problems to my attention. They had nothing to do with the app directly. The criticism was about the 
semi-religious hype around Rome. Hashtag Rome cult. With this in mind, the so-called believer plan also seems to have slightly religious connotations. This plan consists of paying $500 for five years in advance. I briefly thought about it, to be honest, but um, I'm glad I didn't invest into this plan. Yeah. On top of that, the tweets of Rome's co-founder and most prominent leading figure didn't make the impression that the app was as high a priority as might be expected. And his behavior towards his community was sometimes surprisingly rude. Generally, of course, no reason against the app, just a co-trigger for my growing concerns. On top of that, Rome's official Twitter account was in turn for weeks and months just crickets, no updates. Then, out of nowhere, we'd like to hear stories of meaningful experiences people had while using Rome. Again, after months of silence, with lots of people asking for updates, and Rome being like, Am I a pretty girl? That was a comment to Rome's tweet. Struck me as funny. Others responded, The lack of proper communication at this company is alarming, and Rome has captured me, but something feels like the Stockholm Syndrome. I wasn't that deep into the Rome experience yet, and I didn't want to be. So, in short, for me personally, the price of the app was a bit too high, its development too intransparent, and its continued existence too uncertain. Although Rome seems to make a lot of money, there were few updates and growing concerns and doubts on my part. For all these reasons, I got out. I still found the Rome community to be quite lively and friendly and helpful though, for example on Slack. But all in all it wasn't enough to make me stay, especially given the alternatives. There are several alternatives to Rome research, most of them cheaper, some of them free. Logsec and Obsidian are among the best known Rome research alternatives. Athens, Remnote and TiddlyWiki, I think, are others. The app Notion is also often mentioned and very popular right now. But Notion is only comparable to Rome research at first glance or to a certain extent. In fact, Notion addresses other use cases and target groups and is better suited for teamwork, for example, as of right now. Depending on the workflow, the app can also be used well in combination with Rome research or Obsidian, which I switched to. I think one of the more decisive factors for me to switch from Rome research to Obsidian was the view into the future. I wanted to have more control over the files that are created during note-taking, and thus be more independent of the tool with which I added them anyway. Obsidian offers just that and more, but more on that another time. Well, even though Rome Research doesn't give you the exact same amount of control over your own files, it lets you easily export them, which then makes moving to other tools also easy. Within Obsidian, there is a Markdown import program that lets you convert all Rome-specific Markdown formatting for Obsidian with a few clicks. When I left Rome, uh, it was not yet possible to change the date format of the uh, daily notes. I'm not sure if it's possible by now. If not, and you want to do so and change the date format uh, to something more to your individual uh, needs, you can follow a guide by Nicole van der Hoeven to do that, which is linked below. It does involve making use of a Python script, I think, which is beyond my knowledge. But for those of you who can handle it, go for it. Nicole also makes very helpful videos on Obsidian here on YouTube. Her channel is also linked below and highly recommended. Okay, that's it for today. You can post any feedback and questions in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, then show it some love, press the like button, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and join my so far 46 subscribers. Special thanks to you guys and to everybody. Thanks for watching and see you next time.